Hello everyone. I've been told it's been a while since I've done a cooking video and I guess it has. Things have been a little crazy on the business side of things so I thought let's take a break and enjoy some food. Lately I have been on a kick of penne arrabbiata. Now I'm a very very fussy eater. I have something called sensory processing disorder which means everything is enhanced and heightened. How clothes feel, uh, how food tastes, textures, everything is like magnified massively for me. So as a result, I'm a very finicky eater. And I've always eaten just regular pasta with butter and Parmesan and no sauce for a long time. Then I went to angel hair because I like the finer texture of it. And now I'm on to little penne, <laughs> big penne or eh, a little too much pasta for me. However, however, this is not about what's the proper Italian way or anything like that. This is just about my personal preference and my discovery. And what I have been uh, eating a lot of has been the Barilla Mini Penne, which is available at Walmart and many grocery stores here in the U.S., along with uh, Reos Arabiata sauce, which uh, I, tr I like things a little bit spicy. I know one of these is... <laughs> there he is right on the end. The Reos... Arabiata. And if I had any complaints, it's, it's chunky. I, I don't like the tomato chunks. I, if they're in there, I'll pick them out or push them off to the side unless they're very, very small. Again, it's like a texture thing for me. So I would pair these two together and I'm happy, right? That's my whole world. And I thought, well, let's expand that world because maybe, maybe there is a better penne and maybe there is a better Arabiata sauce. So in this series of videos, I'm going to actually cook a meal with each of these sauces. I'm not simply going to dip a spoon in them as they sit here at room temperature and then tell you if I like it, because that's not how I'm going to eat it. And I'm going to try these different penne's. So I've got uh, De Checo, which again is very commonly found here in the grocery stores. I've got Reos because I figure, hey, their, their sauce is so good, maybe I'll like their penne. And then I saw some videos from real Italians saying, you know, all that's junk. You should be buying uh, pasta that's more white in color. It's been dried longer, blah, blah, blah. I didn't grow up in Italy, so I don't know any better. But I went on Amazon and I found two of the higher recommended penne's, which I'm afraid are going to be too big once the water um, saturates them and they inflate a little bit. I don't think I'm going to care for the size of it. So, you know, make fun of me all you want, but um, I, I tend to like smaller bites. In any event, I'm going to try it because it's just pasta after all. And the, the baseline for me that I'm comparing everything to is the Barilla Mini Penne. Now, I had a hard time finding this at uh, some of the Walmarts have it. And some of them don't, but the uh, Kroger grocery stores tend to have it. And they don't give us a number of what size this is on Barilla, but it is a... Uh, Mini penny number 360. I don't think that's the number. It's usually like 42, something like that. And then the DiCecco I've never had before. In fact, I haven't had any of the other pastas. See, that's a 41. And um, Reos, which I didn't even know they made pasta. I also found out they made soups and they made uh, other frozen like lasagna and stuff, which shows you what I know. This is something called Marullo. This is imported from Italy. And they tell you how many hours it's been dried. I guess when it dries really super fast, it turns yellow. So the whiter it is, I guess it means it wasn't rushed through. I don't know if that, if I'm gonna notice anything there. And then this one is another one imported from Italy that should be a proper penne. But I just wanna tell you that I may not appreciate these because I wasn't raised with them. This is my norm, right? I'm going to be comparing the fancy, real stuff to the fake American mass-produced stuff, and I have a taste for that. So I want you to keep that in mind as I make the video. It's based on what I'm eating and what I'm used to, and what I'm looking for is to enhance that and make it better. In theory, in theory, one of these pastas could taste better to me just because it's genuine or authentic, doesn't mean I'm automatically going to like it better. Uh, and then when it comes to the pasta sauces, if we move these out of the way, I went a little crazy 
I guess I get a little obsessed with things. Once I start on a path, I need to know the answer. So I've got a series of different sauces here that I've scoured uh, five or six of my local markets. And then one I ordered online from Amazon, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But of course, Rayos, that's the good, that's the, oh, that's the best. But it's really the only one I've ever had. I've had some of the other store-bought pastas that are like spicy tomato or, you know, things like that, but nothing that was Arabiata that I can recall. I just bought that. I heard a lot of good things. I like it. I've been eating it ever since. But how would it compare to, say, this Du Chalucci, which is um, the reason I bought this is strictly because it's no added sugar. It's... Um, very limited ingredients, and the numbers on the side of the package here are unbelievably low with regards to carbs and fat, etc. So it's actually really impressive that they got this this low, but it does look really watery. So this one scares me a little bit, but we'll try it. The rest of these are regular store-bought. So we've got Muir Glen. This is their spicy Arabiata sauce. Uh, we've got uh, Delalo. And again, just doing the spicy Arabiatas. Carbone. I've heard a lot of good things about Carbone. This one I found in Whole Foods. It's called Pizza Girl. And it's an Arabiata. This one, obviously, you can guess where I found this one. Sprouts has their own uh, spicy Arabiata. I don't know why it says spicy Arabiata when Arabiata, I think, means angry in Italian, which implies spicy. That's like they're saying it's spicy twice. I don't know. Muti. This is supposed to be a true Italian Arabiata. It should be smooth with no chunks. I guess a lot of the American pasta sauces have chunks of tomato. And finally, I found this one, and I know, I think Sprouts had this, and Whole Foods, I think, had this. This is Michael's of Brooklyn, and this just looks like somebody put it together in a garage. And it's got all kinds of stuff floating in there, and it's a giant uh, container. So I guess for the price, you get a lot of sauce there. And uh, I, I'm told the good ingredients, or rather the good sauces, should have like eight ingredients or less. And if you notice the ingredient list on here, pretty short, and you can pronounce everything. So that seems to me to be genuine. So I think tonight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my staple. Should I? Should I do the mini? I already know I like this. I already know these two. These have carry written all over. Oh, I could eat this night after night. It's so so good. So maybe I should mix it up, get myself out of my little comfort zone, and try. Oh, I don't know. Where do we want to start? I'll try the DiCecco, all right, because DiCecco is easy to find. I would hate if I liked one of these uh, more than anything else because they're expensive, 12 or $13 a bag, um, and I have to order them from Amazon. I can't find these locally so far. So I'm hoping I don't like them for that reason. But if I like the DiCecco, hey, I can find that just about any market. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cook a batch of this up right now. I think I wanna start with this sauce right here, this Michaels of Brooklyn, cause that's intriguing to me. And I'm gonna have dinner. And then over the course of a few dinners over the next few weeks, I'll film updates, maybe cooking another one of the pastas, another one of the sauces. I'll put an update video up. And then eventually when these series of videos are done, I can kind of put them all together, uh, maybe with some editing, maybe not. It's going to be a long video if I don't edit it. But we're going to just do this in naturally, post the videos as they become available. And in that way, each individual um, product I'm trying will be separated by video. Once I stitch them all together in one long video, it might be hard to find if you're looking for a specific review of something without time stamping it. It's very, um, it takes a lot of time to sit through and, and sort all that. So. But if time permits, we'll eventually get there. So this is my current series of videos here on the uh, cooking channel. And there's going to be nothing fancy here. 
we're boiling a pot of water, we're cooking the penne, we're getting a small saucepan, we're warming up the arabiata sauce, drain the penne, put it in a bowl, pour the arabiata on it, and uh, I was going to say bon appetit, but that's actually French. In any event, don't mind me, I'm an idiot. Um, let me get cooking, and then I'll be back in a minute. For you, it'll be just a second. With it all prepared and my taste test. Here we go. And just like that, we're ready to eat. So once again, we're using the Di Checo Penne. I'm used to the Barilla that takes seven minutes. This takes, they said, 10 to 12. I went 10 and a half. I like it. El Dante, El Dente. A little firm and the michaels of brooklyn sauce you know if i said i didn't want chunky if i like it smooth this is chunks of everything i mean look at this in the pan it got i can see green pepper in it which i i like green pepper but um i don't know uh i was used to eating angel hair which is like two to three minutes in the boiling water at the most and then you know seven minutes is forever so now waiting even longer is torture for me. But uh, here's where we're at. We'll try them out. There's still steam coming off of it. This is how I would normally make it for myself. And so we'll see if I like it after uh, having a meal with it versus just a single bite. Okay, here we go. So a mixture of the new penne, which is a bit larger and thicker than what I'm accustomed to, and this new Arabiata sauce. Now, I don't like spicy things, let me be clear. I like a little zing, all right? I like a little tang, but I don't want it to burn the roof of my, mouth, the roof of my mouth off where you can't taste anything but heat. So here we go. Well, that has no spice whatsoever. Pasta's good. I like the pasta. It's a little bit thick compared to the barilla, but um, the sauce, I would say, tastes almost like a marinara. It doesn't have any, any bite to it. And what I found is when a sauce is too spicy, use it sparingly. So I haven't poured a lot of sauce on this dish, just in case. And in that way, I have some, some noodles that are untouched, if you will, that can help cool my mouth off between bites. That's my strategy. It doesn't look like I'm going to need that strategy today, and I could have used a lot more of the sauce. Okay, so my assessment of this, I can tell you right now, it's fine. It's okay. I don't taste any spice at all. I don't taste any, you know, chili pepper or anything like that. It is... Um, a bit sweet, not too sweet, a little bit sweet for my liking. And um, the, the Checo pasta, that's a win. Still like the Barilla better. I know you're going to skewer me for that, but uh, big of a bite. Yeah, this really looks so homemade that... Um, I don't know. I had high expectations. I was going to knock my socks off or something. And uh, yeah, a little too sweet. I think that if I was trying to avoid any spice, um, this would be a good option. It's something you might get at like a, an Italian restaurant in that sense, in my experience. Um, some Italian restaurants. It's not what I would define as an Arabiata sauce. But overall, I'll eat it. It's fine. It's just uh, no, no kick to it at all. So there's Michaels of Brooklyn, and uh, on to the next one.